when I became a mother, I failed every step of the way. <laughs> and my failures led to a severe postpartum depression that landed me in various loony bins for the first four months of my son's life. This was not how I envisioned becoming a parent. I mean, I figured I would be just like all those women in the movies, which is where I learned everything about life. <laughs> in films, the mother and baby always bond immediately. She looks at him with tears of joy and says, well, hello there, you beautiful boy. I also looked at my child with tears. <laughs> tears of profound and hopeless terror. <laughs> Who is this creature? And how the hell am I supposed to keep him alive? <laughs> child from a small family. I had never seen or held a newborn baby before, but I had bought in to all the 60s feminist dogmas about childbirth. First and foremost, it has to be natural. <laughs> no drugs, no episiotomy. No C-sections, no induced labor. If you do any of those things, your child will have lower intelligence, learning disabilities, seizures, and it will be your fault. <laughs> because poor little you couldn't handle the most excruciating pain that Satan ever devised. of childbirth. <laughs> it is a miracle that anyone who has been through it is willing to do it again. <laughs> the labor went on for too long and I couldn't push him out so they had to put me out uh, and do a forceps birth. I failed at natural childbirth. <laughs> And it probably created a special needs child. <laughs> My husband, Benny, is Danish, and he was working in Denmark at the time, so I gave birth in a foreign country. Big mistake. <laughs> After the birth, we moved into my father-in-law's country house because, again, from the movies, <laughs> I had this fantasy of strolling in beautiful nature with my laughing baby. <laughs> the house was cramped and uncomfortable. The weather outside was rainy, dark, and windy. And anyway, there was no strolling possible because I was too overwhelmed to figure out how to dress myself in the morning. <laughs> Plus, I could not stop crying. Now, I'm going to give you some advice. If you happen to be planning a nervous breakdown, <laughs> do not have it in Denmark. <laughs> That's because the Danes, like the British, consider strong emotions to be bad manners. <laughs> Danish women are capable, stoic, and independent. I, on the other hand, was fragile, frightened, and exhausted. <laughs> and my worst failure was I couldn't breastfeed. <laughs> I didn't like doing it. I was sure I was doing it wrong. So we switched to formula. And again, in our culture, breastfeeding is a sacred, health-giving ritual. Feeding your baby formula is child abuse. <laughs> I had now given 
my special needs son, an incurable autoimmune disease. I am the worst mother who ever lived. They find a Jewish shrink who says, what are all these foolish tears about? Go home. Light the Shabbos candles. Start preparing for Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done any of that. <laughs> Why is he talking to me like I'm a character in Fiddler? <laughs> and then he repeats what everyone's been saying. Motherhood is instinctive. Nature will show you what to do. Well, when nature showed me what to do, I must have slept through. I keep on crying. So Tevya the shrink. Decides that I need to be hospitalized. The psych ward is in a gloomy old Dickensian building in Copenhagen. None of the other patients talk to me, partly because of the language barrier, partly because Danes do not speak to strangers. <laughs> now, the other inmates, <laughs> the, the other inmates all bathe themselves every day, they wash their undies out in the, sink, in the sink, they make their beds neatly, and they change the water in their flowers. I, on the other hand, lie there, unwashed, in my unmade bed, my rumple sheets, and suck on Marlboros while the flowers on my bedside table wither and die from neglect. Not only am I a failure as a mother, I am a failure at being a patient in a lonely bed. <laughs> I wasn't improved, so we fly back to New York and the psych ward at Mount Sinai Hospital on the Upper East Side. My roommate was a novelist who had been married to a famous film critic, critic, theater critic, sorry. Another patient was a gay guy who was totally obsessed with Judy Garland. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> My kind of thing. <laughs> to share whatever was on our minds. So I raised my hand, and I asked if anyone knew the most efficient and painless way to kill yourself. <laughs> and it turns out that a lot of the other patients had been thinking about this very subject, and they all offered some really cool suggestions. It was the most fun I had in months until the uptight therapist soon put a stop to the discussion. She said that my topic was counter-therapeutic. <laughs> What's her problem? <laughs> But somehow, by some miracle, I began to improve. Mostly because the raging hormonal changes caused by pregnancy had finally begun to subside, and I was beginning to feel like my normal self again. We like to think that we're in charge of our emotions, but let's face it, more often than not, it's Captain Biochemistry who's running things. One night, some old friends drop by, two gay guys who entertain me with funny stories about their messy lives. And the friendship and the laughter suddenly made me think that maybe life actually is worth living. 
The next day, Betty brought our son, Jonathan, for a visit. I picked him up, and he smiled at me, and I said, just like in the movies, well, hello there, you beautiful boy. <laughs> it was time to go home. I had a domestic helper for two weeks, and finally got the care and guidance I should have had at the beginning. I never really needed hospitalization or drugs or therapy. All I really needed was a servant. <laughs> My demented mother-in-law spilled the beans, and he asked me about it, and I tearfully started to explain that it wasn't that I loved him, it was my hormones, yada, 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 and he stopped me. Okay, okay. What are you making such a fuss about? I've always known you were a nutcase. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> So I started out with absolutely no talent for motherhood. And in spite of all the birthing rules I broke and all the nursing rules I broke, Jonathan turned into a smart and healthy and perfect <laughs> man. Everyone always says, you have such a great kid, and the two of you are so close. How did you do that? And I laughed to myself, little do they know. <laughs>